Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing the assumptions for Spearman's rank order correlation in SPSS. I have here in the SPSS data editor five variables. One is an ID variable, and then I have four dependent variables, outcome, symptoms, motivation, and functioning. All these variables have scores that range from 1 to 10. And we're going to run under the assumption that these are rank ordered. This is an ordinal level of measurement. So for example, looking at the outcome variable, the 1 represents the first rank, the 5, the fifth rank, to the second rank. So we don't know the distance between 1 and 2. We just know that 1 was ranked higher than 2, and 2 is ranked higher than 3. If we were to assume the distance were equal, this would be a scale variable. If the distance between 1 and 2 was the same as the distance between 2 and 3, this would be a scale variable, and we could use a Pearson's correlation, potentially. We'd still have to test for the assumptions for Pearson's R, but we'd have the option of doing that if we were working with scale level data. So if we want to test and see if there's any significant relationships or meaningful relationships between these variables, we can't use a Pearson's R in this case. So we have to move to a non-parametric, and one option would be Spearman's rank order correlation. Even though Spearman's rank order correlation is a non-parametric statistic, it still has assumptions. One of the assumptions is that the scores are measured at the ordinal level of measurement, or higher. So we could have ordinal interval or ratio. Of course, in SPSS, we're only going to see ordinal or scale as acceptable for Spearman because interval and ratio are, are combined on a level of measurement referred to as scale. So in SPSS, we'd have to have ordinal or scale. We could not have nominal. For Pearson's R, we would need scale only. The second assumption for Spearman's rank order correlation is that the variables have a monotonic relationship. For the relationship between two variables to be monotonic, the value of one variable would increase as the value of the other variable increases, or the value of one variable would decrease as the value in the other variable decreases. This may seem similar to the assumption for Pearson's R of linearity, but a monotonic relationship is not always linear. A linear relationship is always monotonic. So how can we test the assumption that the relationship between these variables is monotonic? Well, there are a few ways. One way would be to go to graphs and chart builder and use a scatter dot, and this would be the simple scatter, and then run every possible combination. So this is a long way to do it. For example, you could have motivation on the y-axis and outcome on the x-axis and click OK. And you would get a scatter plot like this. So at first it would appear this relationship is both monotonic and linear. But if you look at the y-axis, you can see we have a 1, 2, 3, and then it skips all the way to 9 and 10. And that's because in the motivation variable, we don't have any observations between 4 and 8. So to make a scatter plot that's a little easier to interpret, scatter plot without missing points, and to view all the variables at the same time, you can go to Graphs and Legacy Dialogs and select Scatter Dot and then Matrix Scatter and click Define. And we want to move all four of these ordinal level variables over to the list box labeled Matrix Variables. So I'll just drag these over. And I'm going to make no other changes to this dialog. I'll click OK. And when the matrix scatter plot is first generated, you can see it's a bit small. So I'm going to double click on this and change the size. 
which will be under Edit and then Properties or Control T. And you can see here in this case the height is 5.2. I'm going to change this to 8. And I'm going to leave the Maintain Aspect Ratio checked off. It's checked off by default. Click Apply and then close this out. So this makes the matrix scatter plot a little easier to see. So using that example of motivation and outcome, we can see here there's distance now between these points when there wasn't before. And it's clear that this relationship is monotonic but not linear. So if we were to draw a line that moves between these points, the line would curve. It would start down here and move out to the right and then curve upward. So it would be monotonic but not linear. If we were to draw a line through the points here and symptoms and outcome, the line would be fairly flat. We'd say there's no relationship between these two variables. And similarly between function and motivation, no relationship. Between functioning and outcome, again no relationship. But here between functioning and symptoms, the points make sort of a U. The points start in the top left, move down toward the bottom middle of the scatter plot, and then they move toward the top right. So this relationship between functioning and symptoms is neither linear nor monotonic. So in this case, looking at these scatter plots, the only Spearman correlation we would calculate would be for motivation and outcome. And to do that, we would go to Analyze, Correlate, Bivariate, and we're looking for motivation and outcome, so we move those two variables over to the variables list box. By default, under correlation coefficients, Pearson is checked off. I'm going to uncheck that and check off Spearman. No changes are made to options or style. And click OK. And we can see we have a statistically significant relationship and the value of Spearman's row in this case is 0.863. So there's a strong correlation between outcome and motivation. I hope you found this video on testing the assumptions for Spearman's rank order correlation to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.